Hello, I'm Doug, and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel. And today on episode number 25 of Mild Melty Cheeses, we are looking at a double creme Gouda. Double cream Gouda. It's not French because the cheese is Dutch. And not mentioned in the thumbnail, but we're also looking at a low fat Gouda, which I don't think is Dutch or imported. It's probably domestic, but uh, that's the other side of the coin. This ha this double cream has some cream added to it before they make the cheese. This one has skim milk as part of the recipe when they make the cheese. So it's opposite sides of the same coin. But before we really dig into these, please like this video. Give it a thumbs up down there. Leave comments and questions. Share it with friends. Subscribe to the channel and click that bell to get notified when the new videos come out. So this cheese, neither cheese, is really listed in Liz Thorpe's wonderful book, The Book of Cheese, where she goes into Gouda's and other mild, melty cheeses in her Havarti Gateway chapter. But when I saw this double cream Gouda in the grocery store, I kind of knew what it meant. I knew what they were after, what they were trying to do. So one, so one side has uh, grocery store packaging, double creme Gouda from Holland. And it's like $18 a pound. So I'm expecting a lusher, richer, thicker, more fatty mouthfeel. And at the same store, I found this low-fat Gouda, which had been sitting around in the packaging in the store for six months. So when I tasted a little sample of that, I cut off this corner. I found it you know, older, crystalline, hard, aged, had signs of age. Like an older Gouda might have. So we'll just sort all that out as we go along. Maybe it's an example of an older Gouda that doesn't really belong in this series. But we will see. But the mild melty cheese designation is really for an everyday table cheese. It's, just, it's nothing fancy. It just has uh, some nice flavors that are cheesy, buttery, dairy type things and uh, melts well. And uh, not expensive, so you could use it, you could uh, have some every day at different meals. So, there is a waxy coating, a wax rind. May as well just pull it off now, so I don't have to fight it the whole time. Yeah, it's that waxy cloth thing on this Dutch double cream Gouda. So I'm expecting certain things in the flavor and texture because of that name. Let me get a few pieces ready. It seems a little darker, a little more yellow, a little more to the brown side of things. Just based on the color. And these are both at room temperature for more than a couple of hours now. But I've got some pieces cut up. I think we're ready to go in and see what's in here. Mmm. Very wet, very coating, very lush, creamy mouthfeel. And few signs of great age. It's like three to six months old, seven months old. Very little in the way those crystalline masses that tell you that something in the cheese is really old. And more of the younger buttery dairy notes. So this cheese, wow, it's got a little hint of something savory, something you would uh, may associate with baking spices. A clove, uh, uh, allspice. It's low intensity. It's not up front or anything. Huh, that's interesting. There's a spiciness to it that's not uh, hot, it's not peppery. So I don't know if it comes from the cheese process or from where they age it. But it's a little bit extra compared to the regular Gouda that I had in episode one, where the tanginess was prominent. 
and the light, fresh, uh, buttery dairy notes. So this is a little bit different. It's got the spicy notes and it doesn't have the tanginess. And the spicy does not mean hot or peppery. It means some baking spices having a little bit of influence. Detectable and take, shifts the whole cheese flavor profile in a different direction. So I'd say dairy, buttery are the main notes. I can detect salt and then the spiciness makes it different than some of the other cheeses that we've had in this group. So yeah, that'll be interesting. It tastes on different things. More fat for sure. And I'm going to go ahead and sample this other guy. So I think it's going to be going in the other direction, away from fat. And somehow I'm getting the impression this is older. It's more crystalline, more translucent, uh, harder. Seems to be less moisture in here, so let's give this a try. Wow, many crystalline parts. Maybe a bit more salt. There's hard parts. They might be near the rind and not really in the center. I'll have to explore further. But there's hints that it's older, six months, eight months, ten months, or more. And it doesn't have the rich, luscious mouthfeel that this guy has. Or some of the other young cheeses that we've had in this series. So, either by uh, some fault of someone's or by design, this one is older and tastes older. Butter and dairy notes are not the main thing that jump out. Saltiness. Uh, not really outdoor flavors. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I would call it. This has a tanginess that's an older tanginess. It has some features that say, oh, I'm older than a lot of cheeses. And chief among them are these hard little crunchy bits in there. Do you often get in aged Parmesans and older cheeses of various kinds? Okay, I'm ready to put these on a few crackers and uh, do a little tasting comparison. So the idea of the double cream Gouda is to be a much more luxe, rich, more decadent kind of uh, cheese experience. So I'm going to put a good chunk onto this low salt Triscuit and see how that gets along. So I like it. The uh, flavor is not quite the uh, intensity of dairy notes or butter, butter notes. That I get on younger goudas. And the, ex the moisture that's there is not really water that helps you uh, chew up things or helps things go smoothly down your throat. It's, it's more of a fatty mouthfeel. So I'd say the flavors are not the same kind of as in a uh, lower fat younger gouda. On the flatbread, it was a nice cheese that uh, was not overly salted, not overly old, had a nice creamy mouthfeel, and had a little indication of some sort of age or an extra flavor, an extra note. That's not the Gouda tanginess. It was just in there. So hard to pin down. I'm not finding a lot that appeals to me in this cheese. It's nothing bad about it, but it's not better than a normal young Gouda to me. Just a red wax Gouda would be better than this one.
So this is a Dutch brand, Articast, and imported from the Netherlands, and then has the grocery store labeling also. So it's this from a place that knows how to make regular Gouda. And I do detect the higher fat in the mouthfeel, but I don't prefer this one over a regular young Gouda. It's missing the tanginess. And the flavor profile is just better on a young Gouda, in my opinion, or my, for my preferences. Now, check out the low-fat Gouda in, uh, with some crackers. Okay. So that's good. People would like it. It's a bit saltier than the uh, double cream Gouda. And people might like it better. It's it's an obviously aged cheese. I can't say what the age is, but I think more people are going to find this one interesting than will find this one interesting. But it's probably due to, due to the age and the extra flavors that brings. So on a multi-grain. Okay, the whole gamish is saltier with a saltier, salty cracker. And most people would go, oh, that's a, that's a pretty nice cheese and cracker combination. So again, nothing really wrong with it, but it's got uh, less of a fatty mouthfeel, less of a lush, robust texture. And more of the flavor is due to age, advanced age of the cheese which is not stated anywhere on the label, <laughs> very little labeling. I couldn't tell if it was U.S. or domestic from what's showing on this labeling. It goes over the rind. So it wasn't clear at all. I'm going to take some of the double cream Gouda and take a piece of fresh pineapple and put those two things together. Wow, yes, yes, yes. It totally works. Makes the cheese much more interesting than it was at plain by itself. Fruitiness, super sweet pineapple. Very fruity, juicy. It's such a contrast to the saltier, fatty mouthfeel of the cheese. It just, the pineapple jumps out and the cheese stands out as a creamy dairy thing that you don't often get in a pineapple combination. Very good. What else? Got some dried blueberries here. They always work with cheese. I haven't had haven't had this fail at all. So three dried blueberries and this little piece of the double cream gouda. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It goes. Not much moisture in the whole thing. Blueberries are dry. The, Cheese is drier in a moisture sense. It's the extra flavor and moisture is really milk fat. It's not water. So it takes a while to chew it up and uh, get it swallowed. But it is a good flavor combination. Some people may have an issue with the texture. And I don't have any more pieces of this guy cut. Let me get a couple more off. And I want to try the uh, dried cherry. This is a fresh Rainier cherry. I guess I can use the little piece. Mm. Sweet and fruity and high moisture in the cherry part, which helps the uh, cheese get chewed up and uh, swallowed. So that's a good combination. There's not a lot of cherry flavor. You get sweetness and moisture and fruitiness, but it's uh, the cherry flavors are muted and vague, but I liked it plenty. I'm gonna try this uh, double crumb Gouda with a little bit of uh, a date, a medjool date. So a long piece of uh, cheese and a long piece of date.
nice sweetness. Concentrated fruitiness, fruitiness like, um, oh, I don't know, brown sugar, date, raisin, dark dried fruits. They really go. The creaminess of the cheese, sweetness and concentrated flavors of the date, that really works out. Okay, another, another win there. And I think I'll try the date with the uh, older cheese, with the low fat cheese also. This one, see, <laughs> there's even less moisture in this thing. How is this going to work out? Hmm. Good flavors, good combination. No texture contrast, really. Both the dates and the cheese are somewhat dry. And now I think I'm going to try that cherry thing again with the older, lower fat Gouda. Let's see. The older aged cheese notes and the hard crystalline bits, but didn't go along with the cherry as well as the younger Gouda and smoother, non-crunchy cheese. So it wasn't a huge clash. There no, was not a lot of it that was objectionable, but it was quite a difference between the two textures. Before I move on to a, uh, probably do a grilled cheese sandwich with this guy, the one that might melt. But before I do that, I want to try pepper jelly. If I can manipulate everything, I'll just bring it over to me. So what we have here is the old homestead five peppers pepper jelly, which is like a fruit juice and pectin mixture with lots of little pepper specks floating in it. What are they? It says five. Uh, bell pepper, green chili pepper, jalapeno, serrano, and habanero. And thickened with pectin. Like most jellies are. Let me get some chunks. I remember this being a hot, flavorful pepper jelly. And if it will stay on, we'll eat it. Mmm. 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 It's hot. But the sweetness, peppery notes, vegetal notes of all the greenish peppers that are in there. Oh, it makes me salivate. Goes so well with the cheese. The dairy notes are a great contrast. The fat mouthfeel is a great contrast. And then there's really some uh, pretty good amount of heat and sweetness from that jelly. Yes. Yes, that's a win. That works. Anything else? Oh, yes, I brought this rye whiskey. Oh, wow, I gotta, gotta clear my palate from those peppers. So I had the rye first. Well, let me explain. What we have here is a Sagamore Spirits Rye Whiskey at 96.6 proof, 48% ABV, and it is double oaked. So I think what Sagamore does is a blend of a high rye MGP and a lower rye MGP. And they mature it in their usual bourbon cask. Uh, maturation and then they put it in a second probably new oak cask or a toasted oak or something to get a little more of the vanilla and wood influence out. So it's an interesting rye. It's definitely got rye notes. It's not one of those dilly licorice messes like some ryes turn out to be. But this is a really nice one. Highly thought of. Maybe to the sweet side and not from fruit but maybe from vanilla and wood spice and uh, wood sugars. So there are spiciness, a kind of sweetness, and this is probably MGP that is in here, but the, they're doing their own distillation and uh, they've been putting away stuff for years. So their own stuff will come out soon. The Bottled and Bond already has. So the rye. It's 
spicy. Medium proof level, around 100 like it says. And yeah, a sweetness. And that was a herbaceous, herbal, and uh, spicy. Oh yeah, that works. Lots of dairy notes, lots of butter, a little bit of hints of uh, more age than most of the gouders in this, most of the goudas and the other young cheeses in this group. But it gets along with the herbaceous notes, nature of the rye whiskey. There's a little hint of a mint or a eucalyptus type vaporiness to it. It's more of a sensation. It's kind of cooling a little bit. It's not so much a flavor as a sensation, but all those things are together in there and gets along with the cheese. It's great. Let me try with the older thing or the lower fat thing. Wow, it's kind of spicy on its own. Now that I've had a couple of sips of the rye whiskey, this cheese seems spicy. Kind of in a peppery sense. Black pepper is a real common note on a rye. Arrival mid palate finish. It's just always in there. It could always be in there. So yeah, that works okay with the older one with less fat. But I think it goes much better with this uh, double cream. Double cream and a regular Gouda might go well with it. So. I think that's successful. And now, I think uh, part of this is going to end up in a grilled cheese sandwich. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with the grilled cheese sandwich I made with the double cream Gouda from Artikas. Artikas, or de Cas, I don't know, from the Netherlands. So it's a richer, more creamy. Gouda than we did in episode one and definitely more creamy and fatter than this low fat Gouda that's over here which was ignored after a certain point but let's see how the sandwich did okay stringy it's flowing it's pretty nice on the smell I mostly get that grilled bread note Put the cheese is in there somewhere, but I'll taste it more than I smell it. Let's go. Mm. Oh wow, it seems tangy. Which is not a note I got on the fresh cheese. Could be that some flavors are amplifier accentuated higher temperatures because uh, when you eat cold cheese you don't get all the flavors when you eat it at room temperature you get a lot more flavors now I've noticed a different flavor profile sometimes on a, a grilled cheese or other hot dishes hmm it certainly has strings a saltiness a butteriness a creaminess dairy notes and the grilled bread has strong flavors and takes over a lot a great use for this cheese tasty lush rich that's a win so again please like this video leave comments and questions down below share it with friends subscribe to the channel and click that bell to get notified and we only have i don't know one two three more videos to go in this series so come back for all that and cheers mm.